Hey folks, it's Ray DC, RayMaker.com here, and today I've got another one of my hands-on user interface videos. Now, if you've seen these before, you know they're basically just start to finish. I'm gonna walk through all of the features of the watch from start to finish. Uh, it's not a review. I've got my full review video of the Polar Grid X up there in the corner somewhere. Uh, that gets into all the new stuff and what's unique and special and all the kind of good stuff you want from review. This isn't that. Uh, this is just me walking through, through the user interface. I'm gonna use one camera up there, straight down, whole thing. It's probably gonna be boring. There's lots of other cool things to watch instead. But if this is for you, then let's get started. So here we are on the main watch face itself. Uh, now, you can go through the different pages of the watch face widgets, if you will, uh, by pressing this lower hand right button there. You can see activity. This is essentially talking about steps per day. I go press this red button right there, you can see on the side, and this allows me to dig into that more deeply. Uh, so percentage against goal, uh, active time. I can get back by pressing this lower left hand button right there and then continue on through the other widgets. Uh, so this is my training load. In this is the case, it's showing me maintaining, and it's divided up in different sections. This first section right here, the second section right there, then here and here. So this is uh, under training or unproductive, and then here there's maintaining, productive, uh, and then overtraining. Uh, and one of the things I've noticed with this is it's a little bit fickle. Uh, for example, yesterday when I woke up, it shows me as unproductive uh, and basically undertraining, sorry. And in that case, it meant that I wasn't training enough. Yet then when I finished my ride a couple hours later, it bumped me into productive. So I skipped past the maintaining section. And then today when I woke up, I was back into unproductive uh, and now I'm maintaining. So. Uh, it seems a little too finicky to me. I know this is the same technology Polar's had in their Vantage series, but I've been taking a much deeper look at this. Uh, I've now been wearing this watch straight for, I think, like seven, eight, a long, I don't know, a, lo a lot of weeks. Uh, and so basically I've been looking at this over time and seeing how, I think the general concept is there, but maybe just a little bit less, a little less fickle. Uh, in any case, I can go into that there and go down and look at my strain and tolerance. You can see the detraining, sorry, not deproductive, uh, but maintaining productive and overtraining or overreaching, it says right there on the edging. Uh, so I rarely get overreaching. I'm usually in the other ones, but that's fine. I can scroll on down. You can see I've been training less than usual, uh, just not to maintain your fitness. Uh, and one of the catches I have right here in this particular one that's more of a me problem is that about a month ago, I was doing a lot of longer rides with my kids out in a cargo bike for like five hours because of you know quarantine type stuff. And so I uh, was just trying to keep them busy. And so that was actually contributing more heavily to my training load. That wasn't really a real workout per se. It was just burning time, easy pedaling, but it, it kind of thinks it was. Uh, so no big deal. Clicking on through these here, we've got my current heart rate. Again, I can open this up and see my max today was 183. I did an FTP ramp test, so a lot higher than normal. Uh, and then my minimum today was 49. Also, you can use your finger here for touch screen on uh, pages when you're not in a workout and then lowest heart rate of sleep was 45. I do appreciate that they separate these out. That is, I think, super valuable to be able to do that. Actually, hey, and a quick note, before we go too much further here, if you're finding this video useful or interesting or something, uh, just go ahead and whack that like button at the bottom there. It really helps out this video and the channel quite a bit. Clicking on through again or tapping on, I can see my latest training session. So I can go ahead here and open this up and I can look at this ramp test I did a little bit earlier right there. Uh, but I'm gonna go instead and look at yesterday's ride just because it's a little bit longer and a little more interesting. Uh, and you can see as I scroll down through here, my time, uh, my distance, my heart rate, continuing on down at the heart rate zones, my energy used, and this is one of the new features here to be able to see that energy uh, used, not from a calorie standpoint per se, uh, but from a carbs, protein, and fat perspective. So you can see 61% of that ride uh, was burning carbs, 2% protein, and 37% fat. Uh, and again, that mostly aligns to your heart rate zones and, and the length and of that particular workout. Uh, going on down here, there is the speed indicators, there's speed zones, uh, power, because I had a power meter with me. Uh, so you can see 215 watts average. This is connected to a pair of, uh, let's see, this is a PowerTap G3 hub in this particular case. Uh, I had a bunch of power meters on there. My muscle load, again, one of the features that you see coming from the higher end Vanchet series into the Grid X. And then my power zones, cadence, uh, and that's pretty much it on that particular one. So going back to the main page here, there's all my activities. Uh, and then back here, I have nightly recharge. This is looking at my sleep. Uh, so if I go crack this open right there, have my nightly recharge is good. I'd say that's 
uh, debatable. Not wrong, not right. I basically slept until 6 a.m. and then took the baby that was really upset uh, for a couple hours. And then I went back to sleep for about an hour, an hour and 20 minutes or so. Uh, and so we traded off my wife. And so it was one of those, it wasn't like great sleep. So I guess it's all right. But I can go down to this here. You can see uh, the charge. You can see ANS charge. And I can crack, crack this open right there. Uh, ANS charge much above usual. Heart rate average, uh, again, looking at the sleep style of heart rate in particular here. Uh, and then we go down to beat to beat intervals and heart rate variability, 72 milliseconds. The average for the last 28 days is 61 milliseconds. The breathing rate, the last 28 days. So you're basically seeing the past month and then you're seeing uh, last night. So it's kind of a handy way of looking at it. I really like the way they've done that. Uh, most of the wearables is just telling you like what last night was without the context of that longer duration or time period there. Uh, and then going on down here further, we went back first and then down to sleep details. This is where Polar splits that stuff out. They're basically splitting along the lines of older metrics versus earlier metrics. You as a user just jump Jumping into the grid X, you probably don't understand that, and it probably doesn't make a lot of sense, uh, but that's what they're actually doing behind the scenes. And you can see here uh, those split times. So I went to bed at 1.23 a.m., woke up at 9.39, and then it skips this time in between. Uh, so you can see the actual sleep time of an hour and 12 minutes. Um, that's a bit optimistic for what I was actually asleep for because that gap I was talking about earlier, uh, but that's right. I get that that's an unusual night here. And in general, I find that polar sleep uh, metrics from the timing and stuff like that is pretty much spot on. So uh, I'm pretty good there. Continuity, uh, long interruptions. You can see there's that 55 minutes or so. Uh, so clearly when I was still hanging out with the baby, there are parts of that where it thought I was asleep. I was probably still mentally a little bit asleep as well. Um, just trying to keep the little one happy there. Uh, REM sleep, deep sleep, light sleep, interruptions. Uh, and then I can give a rating as well. So how did I sleep here? And this will help Polar understand uh, how was that. So I can say very well, well, okay. I'm going to go with poorly. Uh, yeah, I think poorly should be fair here for this, this particular night. Uh, so skipping on back to this main page there. Uh, so this is the last one when it comes to being able to give workout guidance or suggestions. This is called FitSpark. It was introduced about a year ago and then brought into the Vantage series late last year. And now you see it here within the Grit X series. And the idea is to give you essentially a workout of the day. Uh, and it puts it in one of those three categories you see up top, strength, cardio, or supportive. And every morning when you wake up, it's gonna basically give you a cardio workout almost every single time. Uh, and then when you do that, uh, or you go scroll down, you can see a couple different options for other workout types, uh, as well as the cardio workout that it's gonna give you. In this case, since I've already done essentially a workout and a half today, it's Telling me to do supportive workouts, which is smart. So basically it says, hey, you did your cardio for the day or you did your strength training for the day. Now do supportive workouts, which are more or less stretching. Uh, and if I were to go crack into one of those right there, I can see down here, I look at these and I'll show the actual movements, uh, each one right there. So Ferris wheel and inchworm and groiners and scorpion and all the different moves. Uh, and what I'm supposed to do for each one, you can see those little animations are moving right there. Uh, so pretty useful stuff. And this is great. The idea behind this isn't so much for people that are on a super structured plan. The idea here instead is that if you don't have a structured training plan or don't have a structured coach, that this will give you something to do every day and keep you kind of pushing forward a little bit further uh, each and every day. I think it's brilliant. I thought it was brilliant when they launched a year ago. There's been nothing else like it out there that has this much data and uses it smartly to give you workout suggestions each, each and every day. Clicking on through here next, we've got the weather. Uh, again, we can tap into this right there. It's gonna pull the weather from nearby me uh, here and you can see the rain and wind speed and wind direction and forecast and it goes down and shows you forecast further out for tomorrow uh, and it kind of condenses these as you go along into Thursday and so on so each successive day gets a little bit kind of shorter there uh, going back one last time and I think we're almost at the end and yep now it just shows me the date again so that's sort of the dashboard side of things now let's go ahead and dive into the sports uh, so to do that first off let me just show you the optical heart rate sensor that hangs out in the back there you can see the lights the light colors have changed slightly slightly uh, between the Vantage series and this uh, to much more of the orange and red versus the greens used in the past. And they've also increased the number of LEDs there as well. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 uh, LEDs are used. And then the optical sensors are that kind of set in between there. Uh, these little pads here are used not only for charging, uh, but also doing some additional physio measurement as well. Uh, and this is all very similar to the Vantage, except the colors were changed. Polar says they did that uh, to improve a couple different situations, mostly around fit on the wrist, um, but historically companies usually do that, changing the colors to improve uh, accuracy in different skin tones. So flipping it over again into sports, a couple different ways you can access sports. Uh, my preferred way here is pressing this bottom left hand button. So I press that once, 
and then click start training. Uh, and now you choose the sport that you want to go into. So in this case, uh, my last sport was indoor cycling, but I can press up and down here and I can see cycling, uh, running, and all these are configurable on the Polar Flow uh, app, either the website or the smartphone app. Uh, so I'm gonna go back here just to indoor cycling for the moment. And you can see up the top, there's the heart rate. So it's trying to lock my heart rate. In this case, it's locking the desk. Uh, and it sees it as 45 beats per minute. And then you've got the sensors right there that's blinking up there in the corner. Uh, so in this case, it's trying to look for my power meter on the bike over there. It's not on, so it's not gonna find it. I can go up in the upper left-hand corner though. I can change my power saving settings. Uh, so I can, for example, turn on the screen saver to save more battery. I can turn off the heart rate if I wanted to. I can change the backlight, uh, favorites, interval timer, countdown timer. Favorites is essentially looking at uh, structure workouts and things that are saved to the watch itself to go ahead and execute. If I went down to an outdoor activity like cycling, you'll see that little GPS icon is illuminated as well. Uh, and then if I go back into the settings here, going on down, you'll see we've got race pace because that's gonna leverage outdoor bits there. Uh, and then routes again, outdoor bits. And so routes now in here, I can pull up one of my routes from Komoot, for example. Uh, these are the ones that are the little Komoot symbol there. I don't know if I have any of my Strava ones. No, Strava's not on this watch. Uh, so in this case, just the Komoot routes come over there. And then here is the ones from Polar Flow to Versailles to go swim. Uh, and if I open up one of these individual routes here, I'll just go up to the uh, very top one, Peach or Sheep Patrol there. Uh, I can say, do I want to start from the starting point or the mid route? Uh, and at this point, I need to recalibrate my watch because I haven't done that since the last firmware update. Uh, so I would go through these motions here to calibrate it so I can get the compass correct uh, for this routing there. So going back up to indoor cycling here, we're going to get this started. Press the start button right down the side. Hits record, it started, shows that. Uh, and now it's going to show whatever data fields you've configured, again, either using the website or the app. Uh, and so in this case, my data fields are pretty close to default. Uh, but you can see my heart rate at the top there, the duration, the calories down at the bottom. I can hit this button right here in the lower right-hand corner to change the data fields shown. Uh, you can see my maximum heart rate, bit average, uh, and so on. So essentially very similar to what you'd see from other watches. There's no major difference here. From a sensor standpoint, it can connect to Bluetooth smart sensors, uh, primarily cycling and running sensors. Uh, it cannot connect to AMP plus sensors. That's probably less of an issue if you bought your sensor in the last few years. But if you have an older power meter, then that might not work anymore because that's uh, AMP plus only probably in that case. So just keep that in mind. Uh, I suspect you know, you know what your sensors are and whether or not they're compatible. Uh, I can go ahead and click stop if I want to, and then I can hold here to save that workout uh, and then exit out. Now, one of the new features on this watch is the new hill splitter functionality. Uh, and it's kind of roughly like a Garmin Klein Pro, like a, maybe a smaller version of that. Uh, different in some ways, similar in other ways. It's I've got into that in my full review and all the nuances of that. Uh, but to show you that a little bit, I'm gonna go back to our running this weekend. Uh, so I'm gonna go into my history here. Uh, now in this case, I only did one repeat on the hill, but you can still see it. And when I go down into uh, this here, you'll find that hill at the bottom. Uh, let's see. Going down, down power zones, cadence, altitude. Look, there's not a lot of altitude here, so I gotta, gotta work with what I got. Uh, here we go, hill splitter. So you can see the uphill distance and the downhill split distance. Uh, and what it does is every time you go up a hill, um, within, I'd say like 10 or so seconds, it'll change the uh, data fields uh, on your watch. So it'll show you the hill climb distance. And again, I'll put some B-roll right now to show you that as you're going up the hill. Uh, and it'll essentially count each hill. So it counts and shows you as you're climbing, what you're doing there. Uh, and then as you go downhill, it does the exact same thing. Uh, it has no context or awareness of that hill in the grand scope of your route. So unlike something like Garmin's Climb Pro, which you have to load a course ahead of time, this works no matter where you are, no matter how big the hill is, as long as I think the minimum is 14 meters or something like that high. Uh, but after that, uh, it doesn't really matter. It's as big as you want. Uh, it just simply knows the bottom of the hill and when you get to the top of the hill, um, and that's it. And once you go down again, until it flattens out. Uh, so it's great for impromptu hill repeats. It's awesome for that. Um, so that's much better than Garmin's implementation because that's not so great for hill repeats. Uh, where it's less ideal is if you were going out on a route like in the Alps or wherever um, and you had a route in your watch and you want to know how far to the top this won't tell you that. It'll just simply tell you where you are on the climb but not how far to the top or to the end or anything like that. Uh, anyways you go down here 
you'll see the automatic laps and uh, on the phone app you'll then see each one of the splits uh, that came afterwards from the hill splitter so if you did like eight repeats you'd see each one of those repeats on there again super cool functionality i see that as a bit of early days for hill splitter i think they can go much further down the road perhaps leverage a lot of the commute integration there uh, to get all the details that you actually want from you know a much uh, bigger kind of hill or mountain type climb into the wash but still it's it's a, a really cool concept um, so going back to show kind of another feature here in the sport realm going back a little further uh, into here so this is where you could have gone uh, into this to start our training you can go down you can do the breathing exercises and serene uh, and you keep on going down here look at the Strava live segments uh, fueling this is new so fueling allows you to set different reminders uh, so there's smart carbs reminders there's manual carbs reminders or there's drink reminders so smart carbs here you basically say hey how long is this activity going to be let's call it an hour and a half uh, the intensity what intensity is it going to be at how many carbs per serving so you want to align that to what your gel packets are or whatever it may be that you're taking uh, and then you click on next there it'll tell you here that once you take 40 carbs over the course of that particular workout hour and a half uh, and remind you about two times and 20 grams per serving uh, and then you can add a drink reminder to that every x amount of time uh, depending on your weather and all that kind of fun stuff and then you click OK, tap OK, uh, and then it's going to tell you to drink that amount um, every 20 minutes. And then you click Use Now. Oop, there we go. Uh, and then go straight into a sport. And you'll see it on the left-hand side showing the fuel wises right there. Uh, and if you go longer than the workout, it uses what it knows uh, to keep on giving you that fueling suggestions uh, for a longer period of time. Uh, again, this is cool stuff. It's simplistic, but it's not super dynamic. So it's like half and half. I think in general, technology is trending that way, uh, but not quite there yet. Uh, so going back here, we'll cancel out of this. I'm going back one more spot into this menu down here to show you. Uh, so we did the fuel. Uh, timers are very basic stopwatch countdown timer same kind of timers you'd expect on other watches for the fitness test it's essentially looking at hrv and put the watch on your wrist you're going to sit down on the couch relax uh, and then it'll go ahead and it does this test and it walks you through the steps there uh, and then finally we're down to the bottom which is settings here in settings there is general settings this is where i can pair and sync uh, my phone and sensors so i go into this there's a phone and then there's the sensors and then there's a pair of devices I can look in here and see I've got my phone, my PowerTap P1, uh, a couple of OH1s, a Polar H9, the PowerTap P2 or P1 um, right pedal, PowerTap Hub, Asioma pedals. Uh, you can go through all those. Bike settings, continuous heart rate tracking on or off, flight mode on or off, do not disturb, phone notifications, units. And all the way down to, I mean, all the kind of standard stuff you'd expect. Uh, note here, this is where you can change the GPS uh, types there if you wanted to. Physical settings are your weight, height, gender, etc. Uh, watch settings for the watch face. There's only two options, analog or digital. So this is one area where I think Polar needs to consider a few more watch faces. It's something that a lot of people have found they really like to personalize. And it'd be nice to see a few more options there besides just those stock two options. Okay, with that, a couple quick final notes on things. Uh, one is the bands are removable here. So you can see this right there, this little uh, notch. Uh, right there, so you can pop these out. Standard 22 mil bands, uh, nothing fancy right there, which is nice though, that you can just immediately go on to Amazon, whatever you want, and buy other bands. Let's see if I can get it back in there. It's always a little bit tricky to get them back in. Come on, into your home. There we go, that's in there. Uh, I like the buttons a little better now here. They'll be like a grippy surface. Uh, they definitely feel a little better than the Vantage Series buttons. Uh, I think the watch looks fantastic. It looks so much nicer than the Vantage Series, the way the bezel and everything like that is great. Um, it's waterproof to 100 meters as well. So you can see that right there, kind of puff, right there you go. Uh, versus in the past, it was 30 meters and 50 meters for the Vantage M and V Series. So. There you go. That is a complete look at the Polar Grid X from a user interface standpoint. All the details, probably more than you wanted to know. But if you did find this interesting, definitely go ahead and like that like button down the bottom there. Or hey, subscribe for more sports technology goodness. There is plenty more coming here. Uh, things are just getting warmed up as we approach into summer. With that, have a good one.